Hello, Susan. Welcome to my office. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Glad to be here. How can I help you today? I um I can read out what you sent in or if something else has come up, let me know. What would you like to work on? I have no idea what I sent in. Okay. So for anyone watching, this is a recorded coaching call. Mm -hmm. The form, if you want to apply, is in the video description. And I asked what you wanted to work on today and you said to make more money. And I was like, we well, can coach on that. Or if something else has come up, then let me know. That's still a good one. That's all, that's almost always a good one. I, I love think it. everybody can say, yeah, I'd like to hear about that. Most common things I coach on, lose weight, yeah. make money, find the person, have better communication. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all I'll right. tell you what, that's interesting. As a psychic medium, I have what I call the big four. Everybody wants to know about health. Theirs are somebody else's. Money and finances, job, career, work, and love and other relationships as well. So those are the big four. It's what it, what's most important to us. Yes, 100%. So at the end of this hour, if you were to walk away and go, that was an absolutely incredible use of my time, what would you like to walk away with? Ooh. Uh, I'm not sure. Something something that would make money come in, you know, just be uh, maybe, maybe know that I'm going to sign the next person I talk to to be a client something like that. Ooh, and how would you know that? That's such a, I love that as an answer. Well, maybe, maybe I should say instead of knowing, I would feel confident that. I love it. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. So what, where would you like to start with this? Like, do you want to give me a rundown of your current like business model, like your offerings? Like what do you think would be useful for you to be able to make more money? Okay, sure. I'll, I'll tell you what, what's going on i uh, okay so i am a coach speaker and author and i work with and also as i mentioned a psychic medium uh, but that just is sort of like that is a talent that i bring into everything i do 100%. and it's also yep. how i have derived and divinely downloaded everything that i do also so um so i work with i support women entrepreneurs who are failing to find the fun, the fulfillment and the funds they got into business for. And that may sound ironic if I'm saying, Hey, I want to make more money. Not um, at all. We teach what we most need to learn so that we can learn it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. But I don't work on strategic or marketing parts of the business. I work on the energetic side of you and your business. And so that means that I, I have a proprietary system um, that I teach in workshops and one-on-one -on -one, coach people one-on-one. -on -one. And I help people to get into alignment with their soul's goals and to understand what all that means. And so that they, when you're in alignment, you don't have doors slamming in your face. The doors fly open instead. And so when things are going tough, then that that's evidence that you need to make a change. And so that's, that's really what I do. Um, I do deliver one-on-one -on -one coaching. I would like to expand into groups because I really love love groups and that's why I speak and give workshops and seminars and so um I am really starting to dig in now to my speaking career mm -hmm. and getting that off the ground so that I haven't started yet but I know that this is what I was thinking about this morning my my late father was self-employed most of his life and he told me when I started my first business 25 years ago this summer 25 years um I called him up and I said, okay, I'm going to do this business. This is what I'm doing. And he said, wow, that sounds great. It sounds like blah, 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 you know, encouragement, encouragement. And then I said, okay, so I'm going to need a computer. I'm going to need uh, business cards, letterhead. This was 1999. Um, you know, I need an email address. I didn't need a website yet. I need a fax line, you know, stuff like that. And he said, hold on, hold on, hold on. You don't need any. Of that. And I was like, what? I have to. And he said, no, all you need is a client. Until you have a client, you don't have a business. And I've never forgotten it. And so That's such sound advice, like seriously, all the other stuff's icing. Yeah. If you've got no cake, icing's kind of gross. <laughs> there you go. There, I love icing, but yeah, good point. So um, that's what I was thinking this morning during spray and break time. That's in the shower, communicating with all that is. And uh, the, the idea came to me, well, just, just get a speaking gig. Just go out there and do it. And then I will be forced to create the speech. 
So yes. I have plenty. I have plenty of material and lots of talks that I've given before, but you know, you have to kind of tweak things to your audience and so forth. So um, I've got some stuff rocking and rolling in terms of, you know, being part of a visibility bureau and uh, I've got some tech stuff going on. I know how to do a one sheet and all that stuff, but I'm really just like putting it out there to the universe. Okay. Well, bring me a speaking gig, preferably a paid one. I was going to ask you that because with speaking there, even within that, it's like, do you want to be paid to be the speaker, like the speaking gig, or do you want the speaking gig to position your coaching author psychic medium like your position your business because that can be very different depending on how you mm -hmm. look at it as well right right absolutely and so yeah so what I've put on my uh, in the visibility uh, bureau I've put I usually get paid to speak but I make exceptions so or I may have put in everything's negotiable so really you know I'm looking for both at this point because chiggers can't be boozers I mean beggars can't be choosers and so um, I'm I'm open. I'm open. And so the other thing you said when you um sent your message in, you said you've done everything you can find to do. Like what sort of things have you done to make more money? To make more money. Um, oh, I do things like I'll bring back psychic readings to the four and put mm -hmm. them on sale. And that usually gets some attention. Um, I follow up really, really well um, and have gotten I've gotten my one-on-one -on -one clients that way. You know, I really nurture them. And um, the main thing is to be personal, just to be personal and to follow up and to offer to help and to give as much as you can with that. Well, I say to give as much as I can without going over the line, you know? Yes. And, and you're very to, clear you, on what your line is. Yes. And I need them to cross that line, you know, when we get to that point. So uh, yeah, things like that. Um, I have a, I've been doing email marketing for years and years and years and years and years. And um, I'm on social, although I have cut back on social in the last few months. And except for LinkedIn, I'm doing a little bit on LinkedIn because I find there are more entrepreneurs there now. Yes. And of course, I don't I don't only work with entrepreneurs. If somebody comes up and says, well, I mean, I have a one on one client right now who's like, everything's a mess. Can you help me? Yes. Come, come to Mojo. Yes. So, um, but there are a lot of entrepreneurs now on LinkedIn, whereas 20 years ago, that was the case. And so um, I do that. I'm on Facebook some, still do a little bit of Facebook, not a lot of Instagram, not a lot of TikTok these days. Um, let's see, what else do I do? Oh, I network all the time. That's how I met you. That's how we met. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes. So I do a lot of networking and then a lot of one-on-ones to follow up because I'll go in there and say, oh, this person, I like her energy Oh, I love what she said about such and such. I'm going to have one. And I, I, I do, I do cherry pick them. You know, I don't just go, Oh, I'm going to talk to anybody and everybody because anybody could be my client. Cause I don't, I know better than that. Mm -hmm. um, so I really pick the people that I like and would like to either partner with as networking referral swaps, that sort of thing, or that I hope that they become a client for me. And do these, do all of these things feel good like the email yes. marketing the socials the linkedin the networking yes. the follow-up no, you don't feel overdrawn or you know like, i love how you mentioned the line like you seemed very clear with that none of that yeah. feels too much no actually i just canceled a project that was that was too much it was taking up way too much of my time and and it felt really good to let it go um, but i'm very tenacious by nature and i probably worked on it about twice as long as i should have or could have. And uh, so I'm, I'm glad to be free of that. And now I feel like I have lots of time to do these things. And, and it's very comfortable. I really, I'm really happy about it. And I'm, and I also have lots of time for new clients too. So I'm excited about that. Yes. And so if you were like, okay, today's the day I'm going to welcome you in a new client. Like if you mm -hmm. believed that without a doubt, mm -hmm. what action would you take? That today's the day I'm welcoming a new client. You, you mm -hmm. don't mean onboarding. You mean like actually having a client say yes. Yeah. Someone's like, here, Susan, take my money. Okay. Then um, I probably would do some checking in with the people I've been nurturing. That'd be the, the first thing. If I knew somebody was going to say yes, then I'd just kind of go through my list of people and go, hey, how are you doing? I wanted to check on this. And what about what happened last time? And 
you know, oh, by the way, as I told you, I'd get creative with, you know, with helping you to get this transformation that you're looking for. And I have a, a suggestion. So give me a call. And we'll talk about the suggestion, that kind of thing. And how many spots do you have open right now? Like that you could to be fully I booked? Could, I could probably take three, three new clients, three new one-on-one -on -one clients. I could three new one-on-one -on -one clients. Perfect. So if yeah. you were like, okay, I'm going to take some action, but not be skeezy or pushy or overexhaust myself, but it's like, I'm open. I'm willing. I have the space. Like, you know, I've canceled that other project. I have availability. I have energy and I'm ready. Are there people yeah. after this call who you could be like, actually, I feel like following up with this. Is there any yeah, or resistance I, or anything I, to I that? I sent a couple of follow-ups today earlier, just some emails following up. And then I've got one that's probably sitting in drafts because I still want to talk to her about something. But yeah, I do. And I, I kind of, I've got a, I, <laughs> so I'm changing over from eye contact to convert kit. I love convert kit. Yes. Yes. And so <laughs> that I can use thrive cart, which I just bought a month ago and haven't gotten it all done yet. So I'm working on those things now and, um, you know, getting convert kit really set up and ready to go. And then we'll really start on drive cart. And it's also good that I have the time to work on those things, these back end kinds of technical things. Um, and I do have some help with that. Thank goodness. <sighs> um, so once, once those things are in place, I'll have better, uh, CRM, you know, and I've also heard of Dex, is that right? Dex as a Not CRM with that one. No, it's an, it's an online CRM, D E X, I think it's called. Cool. And so I may, that one out. I may be doing that, but my business manager slash coach slash emotional support human, she said, okay, put that off until you're done with convert kit and then thrive cart. Okay. Then we can talk about Dex, but right now let's just do what's I'm like, okay. Cause she knows I'm likely to just go, I'm going to go get that shiny object and I'm going to go get that shiny object. And I'm going to put them all to work right now and I'm going to make a million dollars. I've never met a shiny object I didn't like. So uh, exactly. <laughs> with the Thrive Cart, uh, Thrive Cart being set up, do you have products to sell on that? Like, are you going to use it to sell pre-recorded things or is it part of your, like, how are you yes, going to use Thrive everything. Cart? So everything in, in my offer suite will, will be sold via Thrive Cart. All these years I've had on my website, I've just got, you know, PayPal button. And, um, and, and I do have it set up to, you know, to have automated responses through, eye contact and so forth and so on. But um, I just, Thrivecart is eventually going to be easier. Oh, it's very easy once it's set up. Far brilliant. more professional. Awesome. Yeah. So, so do you need the convert kit and Thrivecart rocking and rolling to bring in, to welcome these three new one-to-one yeah. -one clients? No. No. no, I've been, I've been working with one-on-one -on -one clients for a long time without. Yes. So yeah, I don't need it at all. It's just you've something You've got the follow-up and you've already sent some today. So that's brilliant. What yeah. else could yeah. you do that you thinking outside the box. Yes. Well, I was actually thinking about that today. I have, uh, in celebration of my 25 years as an entrepreneur, I, the first thing I did, the, the real anniversary was June 1st. And so the first thing I did was bring out the psychic readings and put them on sale. So that was very successful. And then I had that for about a week or 10 days. And then today I've, I've also put my one time, one off coaching sessions on sale. And, um, haven't had nearly as good a response. So today I was thinking, what if I could do like a half hour one-on-one -on -one coaching session for 99 bucks? And then I thought, no, I already do a free destiny diagnostic that's 20 minutes. So maybe I could do an hour for 99 bucks, something like that. So I was thinking about doing that, you know, one last push on that and, and get people to really have the experience of working with me and then go from there. So mm. the tell me about the destiny diagnostic. The destiny diagnostic is probably what most people would call a discovery call. Mm -hmm. um, but I really do get in and coach them with using my intuition and um, walking them through an exercise that we do in the destiny coaching program mm -hmm. and, and just getting them started on what they can do now and what this means and what that means. And so, like I said earlier, when you're in alignment, the, the doors fly open instead of slamming in your face, right? So we look at where the doors are slamming in their face and we go from there. And so it's a little bit, it, it's a little bit interaction and, and, you know, I find out their personal goals and what they're hoping to do. And if they're in business, then I, we talk about what they do in their business. Um, I've coached several people who want to start a business, but haven't yet. And so that, that's really good because 
if I get to them at that point, then they don't start something that's not going to work for them. You know, that's not really in alignment with what their soul's goals are. So, um, sorry, what was the question? I was <laughs> curious about the testing diagnostics. So I'm looking at, so you're oh, like, the okay. Testing di diagnostics. Yeah. So that's like what a that discovery that's call 20, and yeah. And then, so after we do a little bit of working together, then I'm like, okay, well, let me tell you about the destiny coaching program. And this is how it works and how it's laid out. And when would you like to start? Sometimes I say that uh, <laughs> it depends on, depends on the person. So, uh, yes. and that sounds like a, a really great lead in to taster, like a vibe check. Are we, are we mm -hmm. a match? How yes, exactly. do people discover that, like come across that, find mm -hmm. you to book one of those? Well, um, it's on the website, obviously it is in emails. Um, I do a PS at the end of every email that has three ways you can start to align with the divine right now. And that's sort of like really quick and clear. Um, it's also, sometimes I talk about it in the emails i also put it you know when i'm on in, in linkedin or whatever and then i i do a weekly i just call it a broadcast i call it wednesdays and that's free and that's promoted in emails and on the website and so forth and um and i put it on when it, we do it in zoom and then when it's done i put it on youtube mm -hmm. so it's on my youtube channel and i almost always that's always my call to action for Woo Wednesdays. So it's, it's, Woo Wednesdays is sort of a little smaller, shorter version of what will eventually be my seminars, which yep. I like to say that if Brene Brown and Esther Hicks had a baby, I would be that love child. And so I'll have, you know, two or three hour seminars where I'll start with a lecture and then do hot seat coaching and discussion and rapid fire questions, Q and A kind of stuff. And that's, that's the ultimate goal. So that's, you know, coaching, workshops, speaking, and then my own thing. I love that. So yeah. with your Woo Wednesday and you pop it on YouTube, how? what's your um, YouTube channel like? What's your subscriber count? Oh, it's like 140. Pretty good. I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, well, it's nothing. It's and not many, anything. But, oh, it's not nothing. But I do always put that at the top of the email. It says, you know, are you into Woo? Let's face it, everybody's a little Woo when it works. Join me for Woo Wednesdays. and uh, And then I've got, you know, like see the last episode here or. Yeah. So you've got like a system that. with it, but when you think about it, if you yeah. have 149 subscribers, that's incredible. Yeah. You're only looking for three one-to-one -one clients. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's not, I think. It's a small people, percentage. It's, it's tiny. Sometimes people yeah. look at, um, you know, being an influencer and it's like, there's a difference between having a YouTube to be an influencer and having a YouTube to grow a business, to grow a business, it doesn't need to be that many, like three out of 149 is like what? One and a half percent. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Okay. Because sometimes we're always looking for more, like, you know, the, I, I gather, I could be wrong, that the shiny object comment, I was like, I too have never met a shiny object I didn't like. <laughs> and it's like, instead of looking for more, if you double down on the things that you're doing, it's like, you know, we Wednesday. So do you run that on Zoom? Did you say, and then you put the replay on YouTube mm -hmm. and people yeah. are invited to come to that? Yeah, it's it's open to the public, no yeah. charge. Yeah. yeah and so, I, I also offer co-host positions for my networking partners and stuff like that. We have a really yeah. good time. You, you would be welcome. Oh, I would love to, but it might not be, yeah. I don't know what time we Wednesday is. It might be in the middle of the night for me. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's right. It's 3 a.m. for you. Yeah, never mind. Oh, let's wait um, till our summer, your winter, because it'll be 5 a.m. I'm an early riser. I can come then. <laughs> One of these days, I'm going to try a few of them at 6 p.m. my time, which would be 9 a.m. your time. Perfect. So, well, yeah. that's the other so thing, we'll too. See. Sometimes changing a time, because when you think about it, we, we we have connected globally. We have an international audience. I do see a lot of people who will run something regularly, like even networking events or whatever, three weeks of the month or four weeks, if it's a five-week month, it's at 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. Pacific yes. ET. And then yes. one they have at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. And that will attract the Australian audience or, you know, people outside your immediate zone. Testing. I love that. Yeah, because noon my time is 6 p.m. UK time. So that works great for them, <laughs> but not for you. So I, I like that one week per month, do the, do the 6 p.m. And the other thing too, even people who are in your time zone, like as you said, you do have people who are early entrepreneurs or what I lovingly refer to as wannapreneurs, not quite there yet. 
6 p.m. <laughs> yes. if they're still working a nine to five, they couldn't come during oh. the day because they they haven't right. transitioned into their full time work yet. So their evening slot might work yes. really really well. And also depending on your audience, so I do things 8 p.m. my time because I'm I'm neither a early bird or a night owl. I'm a permanently exhausted pigeon. But anyway, I digress because sometimes <laughs> people with young children put their kids to bed, Good. and I usually would you know, my kids stay up later now, but have them in bed and then 8 p.m. So it's playing around with the times because even people within your own zone, if mm-hmm. they're not in that exact thing, I very rarely do anything in the middle of the day Australian time because a lot of my audience aren't entrepreneurs nor Australian. But, you know, when works for you first, if you're happy to do one a month at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Yeah. and you're fresh yeah, enough. And the, yeah, and the thing is that I've got, um, so I, I make people register. It's free, but you have to RSVP. That's what I like to say. So I make them register and then they get, you know, they get my email sequence, welcome in and, and here's this. And how about a present? And how about a DDD, a destiny diagnostic, so forth. So um, I have had people tell me, oh, I can't make it at that time. I work during the day or, you know, I have a standing appointment at, you know, whatever. And so I love this idea. So I'm definitely going to do that. I'm going to do it right away. And so the people who are registered, of course, they get a reminder. And I can always say, remember, this is the fourth Wednesday. So it's this, 6 p.m. This time, or, yes. It's at 6 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I love it. Thank you. You're most welcome. Because sometimes it's, I think we think trying new things, but it's just tweaking current things like ever yes. so slightly. And you said you're moving to um, convert kit. Because the other thing too, part of um, making more money is potentially having a bigger pool to draw from. So more people finding you, discovering you. YouTube mm-hmm. is excellent for that. Um, convert kit, which you're moving to, is excellent for that. Has anyone spoke to you about the creator network for them yet? I've seen it. Nobody's spoken to me about it, but I've seen it. I've yeah, seen so just a little bit. But I when, don't I don't know if I'm if I'm a creator. I mean that's just what they call it. But basically it is a masterminding call. It's a networking call. You and I met on a networking call. They tend to run them once or twice per week. You go along and um you have a little spiel like you would in networking. They put you in breakout rooms. They break you up depending on how many subscribers you have. So they you know, and, and what your goal is. So they have make more money or get more leads. And you can, I, I've played with both just to see who you get matched with. And it's an excellent way to network and meet other, they call them creators, but basically people who have a newsletter list. Some of them are coaches, some of them are speakers, some of them are podcast hosts. Some of them have physical product. I imagine you kind of fall in all the categories because you, you know, you're a coach, you're a speaker, you're an author. Um, but that is a really, really valuable resource and then you can recommend each other through the ConvertKit platform. So when people sign right. up for your list, so say if you go to my ConvertKit and go to sign up, afterwards it goes, Suzanne recommends, and it shows some people. And that's a great mm-hmm. way because then you can have a little look at, it's like, well, I like I like Susan's stuff. Who does Susan recommend? Oh, she recommends this person. And I found that a really incredible way to welcome more people to the list. And then if they're on cool. the list and you already have a system of, saying, hey, um, would you like to book a destiny diagnostic? Hey, I have Woo Wednesday. Like you have all these things in place already. It's now to mm-hmm. get more yeah. eyeballs on them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that is, that's going to be down the line. I mean, I looked at it briefly and I thought that might be good, but right now I need to get my autoresponder set up. Yes. You know? I mean, I got to do the, you know, the front end stuff first and then then I can look deeper. But once but you yeah, have the leads, that, so. you can always change your welcome sequence because they'll do tags they'll explain it all to you but yes i, I know about the and tags they do and so explain forth. all that they have all sorts of systems where you can go to different meetings and they explain behind the scenes but in terms of platforms i've been with they're the most responsive and the most educating of this is Great. how you do it and let's do it together like i had no Great. idea what the creator thing was i'd heard of it i went to one of these calls and we built it out on a call Basically, they give you breakout rooms, they give you time to work on it, you come back together, you get feedback on each other's and real time feedback from people who haven't come across you before is so brilliant because they're like, well, what do you mean by this? Like sometimes a word that sounds great and someone else looks at it and it's like, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. So that tiny little tweak can make all the difference. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's pure feedback. Yeah. 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 It's gold. They did used to run them. They used to do three a month 
early and one late, but currently I think it's because it's your guys summer. They're doing them all early, but as soon as they have the late ones again, I'll probably see you on one of those calls, but they are really, really powerful. And okay. um, once you have people referring you from in there, your newsletter list grows on autopilot. Yeah, definitely. Okay, great. Well then I'll definitely plan on doing it. I, I didn't know if I would or not. I was going to check with my business manager coach. Yeah, so, no. I, and and if you don't like them, then you just you know don't have to attend. And they're not any extra. It's sure. included in the cost that you're already paying for ConvertKit. So I found it a very yeah. uh, beneficial service. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Anything else Thank that you've you. thought of or you could tweak or you could, you know, maximize? Not off the top of my head. And your what your office week, because you did mention at the beginning of the call about potentially expanding into groups. Does that feel yes. like something you'd want to do in 2024 or? Yes. Uh, oh, by the end of the year would be great. That's kind of what I've had in mind all year. But, uh, you know, 2025 is good too. I understand that I I'm in a hurry and I always want everything to be yesterday. But stuff doesn't work that way, you know, yes. strangely enough. I, I don't know what that's about. However, a wise business coach recently told me that she has stopped doing groups and for very good reasons. And so uh, that's you. Thank you. I laugh, <laughs> yeah, I laugh when people call me a business coach because I wouldn't <laughs> refer to myself that way. But that's the thing. Okay. You know? <laughs> a, wise, a wise note coach recently told me. Um, sorry, I. I no, 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 it's okay. Like you're not the first person who said that. So I find that yeah. amusing. But anyway. Um, so I you know, I understand I I think what I would like to do is to have one thing I've found out in all these years is that one on one coaching, for example, the ongoing just renew every month um is not as good for a lot of people, especially psychologically, as a set number of sessions. Yes. And yes. and so that's that's why I sell the one on one coaching, which is I bill it as seven sessions. It usually winds up being eight to ten. And that's just the way that I like to do it. But I can tell them at seven sessions and then I go, oh, and I may add one or two at my discretion, you know, just depending on what you need and you need extra training in meditation or you need extra help with figuring out who your spirit guides are, you know, whatever. Um, so that's what I do. But then when they graduate, then I offer them seven more weeks at a lesser rate. And that would be freestyle coaching. Yep. You know, we can go back and work on anything that they wanted to expand on and come up, do things that come up and what have you. So, you know, I've, I've got that in place, but what I'm thinking about for groups is, and I've been part of a group, a coaching group where um, it was just ongoing. It was a, a subscription. Yeah, and like a membership tried, style kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've tried um, a number of times to create a club or a community or something like that. And I never got off the ground. And so I'm a little nervous about doing groups. But uh, what I'd like to do is to have cohorts, you know, Yes. The, the, next, yes. the next destiny cohort starts June 1st. We'll, we'll meet every Thursday at what time and for seven weeks and, you know, come and be with us. And then, then it becomes like um, the same note, note coach who's so wise. She also told me that group coaching is not just individual coaching, but cheaper that it's a whole separate product. And I love that because I never saw it that way before. And so it doesn't even have to be a whole lot cheaper because oh, you're delivering a different all. project. Yes. Right. So I love that. Um, and selling one to many is always, always better. So uh, that's what I would like to do is to have like a seven or eight week cohort and just do one at a time or do two at a time if I have enough people. Well, once yeah. you have a cohort mm -hmm. base, system rolling because that's basically what I wrapped up you could say you had it 10 a.m Tuesdays and mm -hmm. that was filling and you felt called and it aligned you could also offer a separate cohort at 6 p.m Tuesdays or whatever and yes. then have you know the two different things the advantage of having two cohorts concurrently if you have the capacity to run it 
And um, if you have people who are friends or related, having them in separate cohorts can be a lot better than having them in the same, really? depending on the personality. Because sometimes, you know, dynamics of groups is always interesting. But if people want to yeah. recommend it to their friends, but they don't necessarily want their friends knowing the ins and outs of their destiny, then they can then, then they can be talking amongst themselves about their experience concurrently, but not actually be yeah. in each other's business, which Yes, that makes really a lot well. of sense. Yeah. Yeah, it makes a but lot I want to question. So the one to one, like back to that, like groups we've talked about previously, as you've mentioned, and you're definitely going there, but there's things to consider. If it's seven to eight sessions, you know, seven sessions, but you may add an extra. And then initially when you re-sign them, there's another seven sessions. And then we talked about the other day when it was just you and I bespoke things you do after that. On average, like how many people would be done in the seven to eight sessions and how many would likely need another seven to eight from your point of view? I, I don't know about need, want. I, I'll answer the question with want. I think a, probably based on, you know, I just started offering the post-grad yeah. stuff. Um, I would say probably 50%. Because I was just wondering, a, a way to increase it. money might be to change your package if it felt good. To have it be a 15, 16 session package instead. Like oh. Everybody coaches differently. When I work with people, it's a six month commitment of 20 sessions initially. Mm -hmm. And there are obviously exceptions and it's your business so you get to decide. But most people were signing up again and we weren't done after three months. So I just made it a six month thing. I know a colleague who recently, it's 12 months to work with her. To me, that seems like an incredible commi commitment. But when I look at my people, probably three quarters would sign a second six months with me. So I could, if I so chose, so same kind of thing change my thing to a 12-month commitment. Because when you think about it, even seven to eight sessions, I imagine there's one to two, getting to know, establishing rapport, getting on their goals. And then there's one That's to true. two, wrap up next steps whether or not they continue with you but you know so they can make the most of their coaching that they've had with you or connection then mm -hmm. that really only gives you three to four to the doing the process so if you had 15 to 16 instead when you look at the client journey for you financially makes more sense because you're getting twice as much and it's half the because when you said it renews every month like that's a harder thing and it can be like it's funny People sell the membership model as passive income and whatever. And like, you know, it's a gym. I, I People are a lot more savvy with their subscriptions and stuff than they used to be, <laughs> Do you know? And yeah. people are tending to ask for a lot more for a lot less. Um, whereas if you're a more like, actually, I'm offering a, it's a bigger ticket item, but this is what's involved. You, you need heaps less. Because if you think about it, if you're selling one package of, 15 to 16 sessions versus mm -hmm. trying to fill a cohort. Like a group can be higher ticket, but it tends to be less than one-to-one. -one. Like, as I said, it's not a substitution. We had that conversation, but it does tend to be a lesser thing. And then you need to look at the dynamics of the people and that sort of thing. Whereas one-to-one, -one, mm -hmm. um, but maybe it might be worth looking and talking to your business coach manager slash biz wife <laughs> <laughs> about um, the dynamics of that but it might be something to consider. I like that. Yes, I will be taking that to her, definitely. Okay. Yeah, I like it a lot. And that that really is starting, is starting to turn. Um, really makes sense to take what I coach on in those seven sessions, which are set. I mean, it's customized, but what I'm teaching them is the same for everyone. And so then to have another, like a, second semester or whatever yeah. that's like applying this in your real life a second yeah, semester really like an that. integration time uh uh you know because sometimes i'm th i'm thinking you, know, you go to say you went to school when it was a semester and here's the learning then there's the applying like you know you leave right. you leave college university and you have this piece of paper which you're so proud of and you've spent years doing and now it's like yeah. and now you're in the real world so it's yes. kind of like it's a second part to it. And whether yeah. or not you marketed it as the full thing, like this is what it is, this part's very structured, this part's very bespoke, and it's deliberately set up in this way so that we can have mm -hmm. you using your learnings 
in real world and then we coach on it or have sessions on it or you offer it as a part one, part two. I don't know. Like you can play with this however you want. But yeah. to me, yeah. if, if someone has a set structure of like this is the seven to eight that we're going to learn the process, the destiny process mm-hmm. or however you called it, and then mm-hmm. now that you're applying that process, what's actually happening in your life and let's negotiate the, the speed bumps, which invariably happen. Because I think yes. sometimes people learn a process, they think they're fixed, yeah. not that they were ever broken, but do you know what I mean? And then they're kind of like, well, bumps are happening, but I don't want to go back to Susan because I feel really awkward because she taught me this process and I was supposed to be on my destiny and now I'm not. And yes, yes. But if you talk to them about that and say, this is normal and that's why we have the part two. That's why we have, well, and that's how I've kind of been presenting it has been as an add-on or as the next step for them is like, okay, now we can do freestyle coaching in which I will help you with things that come up and help you to apply these things. But to put it together, I really like that. I like that concept. It's good. Because then you can make more money, but not in a nefarious whatever way, because it's a legit way. And then people don't feel that. Like I I can think of a number of trainings or courses or things that I've done that at the end, I haven't reached the point that I had anticipated and then not wanted to go back to the facilitator because I don't want them to be mad at me or whatever. But if they were like, actually, once you've reached this, here's what happens you know that you've got somebody still holding your hand. Yes. And, and somebody to ask when things are way for you. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Ed, what, did you, what, you know, you could get the client could come on the call and be like, okay, I filed for my LLC or whatever, you know, corporation thing. I, I got that done. Great. You got it done. Now, what is your next step? Why, why are you getting this? If you don't have a client, you know, remember what we learned about you don't have a business until you have a client. So let's do that, you know, or whatever that is going to be and talk about how to make that happen. Oh, also the last session of the destiny process is about manifestation. And I actually barely scratched the surface of manifestation because I don't have time. And I have a whole workshop, uh, online course, everything built around that manifestation um, process and so that's another thing that I could add on or we could you could you could yeah. give yourself more breathing space to do that like mm-hmm. if you're kind of squishing mm-hmm. it into the seven to eight but you've got extra and also it could be a personalized basis because some people might get it in that one session and some people might need more but this part two yeah. semester two not only could cover speed bumps as you mentioned but also celebrations I've signed my next client I've done this holding space for the positive is just as important because we tend to only like sometimes treat our coach afterward, like the emergency room. (laughs) I've broken a bone. No one's buying. (laughs) What do I do? As opposed to things are going really well. And I want someone to hold space for that can be just as powerful and valuable. And then when things invariably slow down because life expands and retracts and it's normal but we tend to think in business as soon as something goes backward everything's stuffed to you know to have that breathing room space capacity extra might even really shift your whole program yeah I really like that that's great I love it and then you've effectively doubled your income with the same amount of work yeah Exactly. But in a way that is in service to all, in service to you, you're yeah. getting twice as much money. In service to them, they're having so much more support, space, capacity, and in service to both of you, it's like a triple win. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. So we have covered a lot today. So you've got the yes, yeah. you've got the um, Woo Wednesday potentially doing one evening a month and seeing mm-hmm. you know, what that has. You've got the um, potential restructuring of your main offer to see, you know, how that works for both of you. And always you can test it. And Mm -hmm. if you want to bring in three people and you have three spaces now, something you could consider, talk about it with your business person, is saying, I'm like, I often will say I'm trialing something. So up until now, this offer has been three months, seven sessions or whatever. I'm trialing it to be, 15, 16 sessions. So for the first three people, this is going to be the price point and have it slightly less than you would otherwise charge so that you can test it. Because then sometimes people who've been on the fence might be like, oh, Susan's got a deal. (laughs) And then you've got your three people in quite fast. 
Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. And sometimes like you do that and you're like, oh, my goodness, this is never happening again. <laughs> and sometimes you're like, oh, this is amazing, but never at that price point again. But, like, when you limit it to something like that, I had a, a colleague recently introduced Voxer days, like VIP days where she just coaches for a whole day. And the price she put on it was like, whoa, it obviously sold out in moments because it was whatever. I wouldn't necessarily do that for something that's 15, 16 sessions because that's a couple of month commitment. But you might be like, say, for example, your price, I don't know what your price is, but say it was 1500 now. And then you normally you'd be like, well, 3000, that's twice as much. You might take 10% off that and say, you know, this for this only or something just to, just to test it. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. And that, that, that fits with, um, with kind of the way that we do things, you know, um, my business manager and I, we, we work on things like that. Like um, how can we make it work better? You know? So this is perfect. Very, very good suggestion. Um, So when your, your colleague who did the Voxer VIP days, tell me how, how did that work? What is she offering with Boxer VIP? I didn't look into the ins and outs of it, but I, I'm what I vaguely remember her saying was it was a set time, like 10 a.m. till 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or whichever time zone she's in. And um, there was a set price and people could message. So for anyone, I, I use Voxer in my one-to-one coaching. If anyone listening to this, whatever, whatever you're going to try, be really clear on when, where, and how the people can communicate with you. And like, because what I loved about this particular offer is it was a day. Most of us can try anything for a day. I wouldn't necessarily do this with your three to six month or your bigger package, because if you don't like it, then you're stuck delivering it for that period of time. Right. Right. So, you know, and like when you said part of your way, you know, to bring in new people or to get the message out was sale of the psychic readings, sale of the one-to-one coaching, maybe you would offer some sort, you could, if it felt aligned offer some sort of box a day. I have considered it myself. I haven't gone into the ins and outs of it yet. I love that um, idea. But now did she just take one person one day or was it she, a whole she bunch took of people? Three opened up five people, places. But she opened up three people, but they had their day each. So she didn't say all three of them on the one day. Like that day. So say Monday you bought it, it was Susan's day. Say Tuesday I bought it. That's Suzanne's day. Um yeah. so that person had the day. And mm-hmm. obviously she had other things like she, the, with Voxer, it's not like you're on call all day, like on zoom. And then you're wandering in and out, they're voice messaging yeah. back and forward, but between those hours, they could message at any time. And she would respond within like 15 or 30 minutes or however long, I'm not sure. But and so the, were those people existing clients or were these, she put it out to a newsletter list. So I don't, okay. I can't recall if she okay. got new people. I don't remember. I, yeah. That. I'm going to, I'm going to look into more of that. I, I love that kind of thing. It's a great idea. Yeah, and any she sort did of what you were like saying that. about like I'm I'm gonna try this out. I mean, this she was fantastic. really clear in the newsletter list that nominally it would be X price, but for these mm-hmm. three because I want to see if I like this. And I think I, I personally 100% believe in transparency. So I will say to my audience, I'm testing, I'm trialing. Um, some people don't like that. They're like, oh well, I don't want this, but you know, you do you. That's okay. I emailed my list yesterday and said, I'm in this competition for podcasts. I want to, I want to win full transparency. When you vote, you'll be subscribed to their list. You can unsubscribe at any time and I'll let you know whether I win, but I don't like for me personally, if I don't know the ins and outs and someone says, Hey, can you just do this? And then I get 50 million emails. I'm supremely irritated. Or if someone's (laughs) putting an offer out and say it's a hundred dollars and I'm like, Oh, I'll get to it later. And the next time it's a thousand, I'll be like, Oh man, Right, so if someone right, says, hey, I'm right. trialing this to see what I think it's, you know, mm-hmm. a beta price or a one-off price, um, I think it's sexy. Yeah, I'm always very clear about own. that too. Even on the Woo Wednesday's landing page, it says at the bottom, it says, um, you know, where it says no cost, there's an asterisk and down at the bottom it says, Woo Wednesdays is free for now, but I reserve the right to charge for it later. A hundred percent. Well, I did, yeah. I did a thing a while back called, like it was a group coaching thing and it was free. And what I found personally is a lot of people registered, but they didn't actually turn up. So then I put mm-hmm. like twenty dollars on it, and um, it, it was interesting that more people came when they paid as opposed to when it was free. But everybody's oh, audience yeah. is different, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good point. Yeah, good point. Yeah, I like that. Okay, excellent. That works. Yeah, cool. and then you get to test. 
So like, you know, with this bigger offer, I would only take a small amount off it. I wouldn't take a lot. And you kind of know, you've kind of delivered it already, even though officially you haven't done it in terms of you've signed people, then they've re-signed for semester two. So you know this will work and it's solid. But if you want like to make more money and you've got space for three clients and it felt aligned, yeah. say, hey, this is a thing I'm looking to transition my offer to. First three people, it's this price. Anybody on the fence, might, that might be the initiator for them to be like, actually, I'm in. <laughs> oh, that's how I got to so this ba backdrop I have. This is my bespoke branding. The ladies bespoke backdrops and branding. My previous iteration, so my previous business, she was, she'd only, before that, she'd only ever done pre designs. So, like, she designed them and you bought from a selection. And she goes, actually, I want to do bespoke backdrops. So, I'm going to do three. It's at this price. I was like, I'm so in. And then yes, when I rebranded yeah. five years later, I was like, I want you to do it again. And obviously, the price because her business had grown and whatever, but you know, so sometimes people know once you have that no right really trust cool. and they do the time with you, they're like, I might not want to do this again now, but when I want to do another deeper dive into the destiny stuff, Susan's my person. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 You may have people you've worked maybe with before. It's, it's time. Maybe it may be time to do fewer, uh, what we call pink spoons. I don't know if you're familiar with pink spoons concept. Ted, Ted Hargrave. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Hungry. He talks about his spoons all the time. Like, you know, okay, the well, little ice cream taster. <laughs> the, a little ice cream at Baskin Robbins. Yes. That's the little pink spoon. So I may want to do fewer pink spoons going forward. Um, you know, I, I don't just give anything away anymore except the destiny diagnostic, but most of us do some sort of, you know, discovery call kind of a thing. It's how people get to know you and how you get to know them and, you know, yeah. I mean, you can get to the end of a call and go, okay, it was nice talking to you. Bye. Instead of a call to action. A hundred percent. And I think that's the freedom and flexibility because sometimes you're not a match or you're not a fit or you love them and they're whole and complete as a person, but not a whole complete person that's going to work and go alongside with you. So exactly. that's the advantage of it. But if you decide, like, if you've got, you've got lots of pink spoons, you've got your destiny diagnostic, you've got your woo Wednesday, you've got your newsletters, um, true. you know, and you said you're an author. So I imagine you've got books. I so do. like, yes, that's a taster as well. Somebody's written words, somebody's, whether it be a newsletter or books, there's, you have heaps, but now it's kind of like building out and you've got the top end, like you've got the package seven to eight, maybe expanding on that. And maybe it's looking at your middle mm -hmm. ground, which your offer suite there, which may happen once you have your Thrivecart set up because Thrivecart's brilliant for pre-recorded things in, in that middle suite of offers. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Beautiful. Awesome. Right. So what's been your biggest takeaway, Susan? Uh, just the, the, the stretching, thinking outside the box, new ideas and that all of that was just that. I love that. It, it really makes me expand my idea of what I can do instead of just like, well, I have to do it this way. Still, I have to do it this way, you know, and I've copied so many other people's people doing other things. And, um, I've kind of come into my own and I like doing things the way that I like, yes. but there are still things apparently that you've told me that I never thought of. And so I'm loving that. I think really. many of us copy other people's things, but sometimes that can yeah. be like trying on other people's underwear. You can do it. doesn't mean you want to. <laughs> and then well. you kind of modify that and go, actually that worked for them in their space mm -hmm. of business and what they had, but for what yes. I'm offering, it doesn't work yeah. at all. Yeah. Like and I look that, at that, podcasting, I, for example, people yeah. often will be like, I want to do it exactly like you do it. And I'm like, but why? Like, <laughs> if you like editing or if you like doing this, do it your way. I just do it this way because I'm extremely efficient. Some people call me lazy, but. <laughs> I like efficiency. Yeah, that's good. Yes. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't edit with Wednesdays. I download it from Zoom and upload it to YouTube and put a few words on it and boom. I'm done. I, I don't, I used to do that. I used to, years ago, I would edit what we used to call teleclasses. That's probably before you were born. Um, Cause it was before the earth was cool. So I'm guessing, uh, but <laughs> we did. The other thing with Woo Wednesday, you might want to consider just to, mm -hmm. we're at the end of the session, but something to think about in future, mm -hmm. running it to YouTube live instead of into zoom. Oh, because yeah. YouTube live gets a lot youtube puts it out to a lot more like i've been dabbling with youtube live the last few months 
And my channel at the beginning of the okay. year, I had 179 subscribers and now I have uh -huh. 571. Because oh, YouTube wow. Live does a lot for, um, it's, it's not other things. YouTube's my focus for this year. I'm trying to get to a thousand because um, I want to monetize, mm -hmm. but that's a story for another day. But um, mm -hmm. YouTube Live is very efficient for increasing watch time and whatever, because when you're live, people stumble across it. And especially if you're doing things in the woo, psychic, spiritual type thing, mm -hmm. people are often very interested. And because they're not in the room, like sometimes people, it depends on your audience. Like, cause I, I say woo adjacent if you read through my website, but yeah. people yeah, yeah. Are, are a bit hesitant yeah. to come to a zoom space. Whereas YouTube live, they can still comment and see everything, but they're not necessarily in the room. So it might be something else That's to consider. Point. That's a good point. Yeah. And they, they don't show up as participant or anything like they're that. Not maybe so. recorded and then shown. Like I came from a very, well, I come from a very Christian Catholic family, um mm. yeah that's a whole thing <laughs> that but, is a whole um thing. you know sometimes being in spaces where you know so yeah all things to yeah that, consider. and actually I had a one-on-one -on -one client a while back and she was one of those ongoing I mean she was with me for like four or five years and uh she she started out she approached me because she was like I'm thinking that church isn't the thing anymore and I can't tell anybody she even used a suit a pseudonym. So yes. yeah. I, I did we talk about being post religious? I consider myself no, post but I like that yeah. frame. Isn't that a good term? Post religious. Yeah. And it's because it's because there are for one thing, I had a very good experience in the church. I was Presbyterian and and my grandparents were all Baptist and we didn't talk about religion very much at home. I mean, we had a blessing before dinner, but that was about it. We didn't like, you know, our parents didn't come in and make us say our prayers at night or anything like that. Um, and and it was it was more of a personal thing. And at church itself, we had, you know, real life sermons and I loved the music and yes, I was in the choir. I did you know, too. I was in the choir. That was had, my favorite part. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's wonderful. It was great. And also we had youth group and, you know, that was usually not anything really religious either. And so that was, I had a really good experience. Now my husband had a terrible experience with religion from several different angles. And so when I say I'm post-religious, it's because I took the good stuff. Yeah. The community, the, the, the connection, the music. Yeah. And the divine feminine values that Jesus espoused, which was love one another, help the poor, care for the sick, visit the lonely, be a community, be a family love one another, you know, love one another as I have loved you. Okay. That's that was the easy. motto of my school. <laughs> uh, you went to Catholic school. Uh -huh. school. Yeah, yeah. I didn't have to do that, but yeah. Why not? Why not? Yeah. I mean, those are the, those are the best things. Those are the best things. And so I keep all those things. Yeah. But, but you can speak to that. And then, yeah, there's ways to exactly, try little tweaks is... to test because sometimes people who've had a not necessarily a bad experience, but a very structured experience or a very rigorous experience, or they don't, they worry they might be judged by other people who find they're stepping outside the experience yeah. that they grew up in. So, yes, you know, exactly. allowing them a space to test the waters without them necessarily having their face on camera or something could be a wonderful ex mm -hmm. experience for them as well. Anyway, Susan, yeah, this I has been like awesome. Thank you so much. That's been awesome. Thank you. Love this it. was just terrific. I feel very revved up and feel like I've got new ideas and that's what I like to do, to do some stuff well, yeah hit stop definitely. on the recording here